few weeks ago, I came across Erin Sullivan's, or as you may know her on Instagram, at Erin Outdoors, and her hashtag, Our Great Indoors Project. Many of us are currently confined to our homes, and this project served as a fun, creative escape. The goal was to create an outdoor scene using items found in your home. I always had a love for macro photography, and I was personally inspired by this idea. And in hopes of inspiring others, I decided to document my journey to create one of these images. I had an idea in my head. The only thing I needed to purchase was the tiny people I needed to make the scene come to life. Everything else was just things I found around the house. It was fun sifting through drawers, closets, and other places to try to find the perfect pieces. And it certainly helped having access to my son's little toys and crafts. As I ventured around the house collecting items, I began assembling the scene in my living room. I put up the baby gate and started to build a landscape. My wife didn't even ask. One of the things I wanted to incorporate was one of my own images as the backdrop. And rather than using a print, I wanted the flexibility to swap it in and out and create different moods or effects. So I used my TV. I mirrored the iPhone to my Apple TV and using SmugMug, I was able to access my images quickly. It was cool to be able to dramatically change the scene just by swiping on my phone. I had my Canon 5D Mark IV with a 100 millimeter macro on a tripod and two LED light sources. One being a larger ring light and the other being a small handheld LED that I could easily change the color of by putting construction paper over it. I even made a sunball to try to create some cool reflections. The surface of the water was a serving tray that I think we received for our wedding. I know it was buried in the back of an upper kitchen cabinet, so it was fun to resurrect it for this project. I taped some light blue construction paper underneath so a little of that blue would pop through. It was pretty amazing how the glass ended up looking like waves in the final images. The sand was kinetic sand from my son's playset. It worked great because I could shape it how I wanted and it was super easy to clean up. The set was actually fairly simple, even though it looked complex at first glance. I'm always in awe when shooting macro photography because the smallest adjustment with the light or the camera really makes for a drastic difference. Overall, this was a great way to stretch the creative muscles and I encourage you to give this project a try. Be sure to tag your images on social media with hashtag OurGreatIndoors. Try stepping out of what you might be accustomed to shooting and have some fun. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to visit us at photopxl.com where we're working every day to enhance your vision. See you in the next one.